I mean, if Bishop Jakes was at a Diddy party, there could only be two reasons. Money or s America's most prominent pastor, T.D. Jakes, began trending on the internet on December 21st, 2023, after a TikToker made certain shocking claims regarding the Christian preacher. So allegedly, Cassie has turned over evidence to the feds. Yes, to the feds. She has turned over videotapes, a USB drive, and Kim Porter's burner phone. On December a TikTok video from user Myaishia surfaced on X, formerly Twitter, Pura has supposedly handed over evidence to the FBI incriminating Diddy a month after accusing him of heinous acts of violence during their decade-long relationship. While Cassie has since settled the civil lawsuit against Bad Boy Records founder, the social media user alleged that she had submitted further evidence to the FBI, including tapes of Diddy's parties and Kim Porter's burner phone. Porter, who passed away in 2018 at age 47, raised four children with Diddy. The TikToker then went on to claim that there was also an email that incriminated Diddy's close friend, Pastor T.D. Jakes, who officiated the burial of Kim Porter. Maishia played a clip of an unknown man alleging that Cassie had turned over tapes of Diddy's alleged depraved parties that involved multiple prominent people, including T.D. Jakes, who allegedly slept with numerous men at the soirees, and the claim seems to have the backing of another famous comedian, Dave Chappelle, who also claims media mogul and billionaire Oprah Winfrey is part of the grand scheme. It is important to note that the wild claims are unsubstantiated allegations made on social media. However, that didn't stop people from taking to multiple social media platforms and reacting to the claims, leading T.D. Jakes to trend on the internet. Jakes, the founder of The Potter House, a non-denominational multicultural church and humanitarian organization in Dallas, is arguably the most prominent Christian preacher in the United States. The preacher, who is often found hobnobbing with celebrities, including Diddy, was named America's Best Preacher by Time Magazine, as well as one of the nation's most influential and mesmerizing preachers by The New York Times. Lately, Diddy's and T.D. Jake's close friendship has come under the scanner after the former was sued by multiple women, alleging S.E. Ewell misconduct by the hip-hop mogul and his associates. Diddy has been open about his admiration for the pastor, whom he credited for helping him navigate through a dark period in his life. In 2021, Diddy and Jakes announced that they had collaborated to bring his exclusive sermon series to Revolt TV, the leading Black-owned multimedia platform. While the claims against Jakes are unsubstantiated for now, this is not the first time the bishop has been embroiled in controversy. In 2009, Jakes' son, Jermaine Jakes, was arrested after he allegedly exposed himself at Keese Park in Dallas and performed indecent actions in front of two individuals who turned out to be undercover police. Last year, the eldest daughter of Bishop, Cora Jakes Coleman's estranged husband, Richard Coleman, was accused of Esuli abusing their adopted daughter. But who really is this man who parades as a man of God? Thomas Dexter Jakes was born on June 9, 1957, in South Charleston, West Virginia, and grew up in nearby Vandalia. As a teenager, he was charged with supporting and caring for his invalid father and dedicated himself to that task. While still a young man, he felt that the Lord was calling him to ministry, so he enrolled at West Virginia State University and began to preach occasionally. Before long, though, he dropped out of school to work at Union Carbide, while continuing to preach on a part-time basis. In 1981, at the age of 24, he married Sarita Ann Jameson. Around this time, Jakes, still eager to be a minister, founded Greater Emmanuel Temple of Faith, a small, independent Pentecostal congregation in Montgomery, West Virginia. The church quickly began to grow from the 10 founding members meeting in a small storefront to 200 and then 300 attendees. Jake soon came into contact with Bishop Sherman Watkins, who had founded the Higher Ground Always Abounding Assembly, which at that time was an association of more than 200 Pentecostal churches. Watkins ordained Jake's and suggested he plant a church in the Charleston area. In 1990, Jakes moved to Charleston and began to focus on the spiritual concerns of the women in his church, many of whom were in abusive or other otherwise difficult relationships. He called his class, Woman Thou Art Loosed, and this later became the title of his best-selling book and the name of an annual conference. 
By 1993, he had moved his congregation to Cross Lanes, West Virginia, where the mixed-race congregation exploded to more than 1,100 people. The following year, he established T.D. Jakes Ministries to produce televised sermons and conferences. In 1996, he moved to Dallas, Texas, where he founded the Potter's House. Today, some 17,000 people call it their home church. His television broadcast, The Potter's House, appears on the Trinity Broadcasting Network and other networks around the world, making him one of the world's most prominent and recognizable preachers. His annual Megafest event draws up to 100,000 people each year. He has written more than 30 books, many of which have appeared on the lists of best-selling Christian books. A gifted speaker and excellent communicator, Jakes has been widely praised for his teaching and his leadership. In September of 2001, he appeared on the cover of Time magazine with the title, Is This Man the Next Billy Graham? He has also appeared on Oprah Winfrey's network and has reciprocated the invitation, inviting her to appear at his Megafest event. He has acted in or produced several movies including The Current Heaven Is For Real. Among his acquaintances, he counts both President George W. Bush and President Barack Obama. But that's the much of good Jake's offers. For decades, the televangelist has been associated with several troublesome teachings, including the prosperity gospel and positive thinking. Jakes has long been associated with oneness Pentecostalism, which holds to an unorthodox position on the Trinity. This position is known as modalism, or historically as Sabellianism. Modalism holds that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit do not refer to distinct persons in the Godhead but to different modes of existence of a single person. It teaches that in ages past, God manifested himself as the Father. During the incarnation of Christ, he manifested himself as the Son, and subsequently, he manifested himself as the Holy Spirit. As one of its fundamental tenets, it states that God cannot exist in more than one mode at a time. So while this teaching does hold to a form of Trinitarian theology, and while it does proclaim the divinity of Jesus Christ, it denies that there are three distinct persons who together make up the Godhead. Hence, the belief statement at the Potter's House says, There is one God, creator of all things, infinitely perfect and eternally existing in three manifestations, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Formerly, the statement was even clearer. We believe in one God who is eternal in his existence, triune in his manifestation, being both Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and that he is sovereign and absolute in his authority. The important word here is manifestations. Where historic Christianity affirms persons, modalism demands the use of manifestations or modes. As mentioned earlier, Jakes has wide influence in many circles. Some 17,000 people attend his church on a weekly basis, and millions more encounter his teaching through his broadcasts, conferences, movies, and books. He is one of a few Christian figures who has a voice that extends into the broader culture through association with Oprah Winfrey, American presidents, and other leaders. But his association with the likes of Oprah and Diddy doesn't seem to age well, especially in the eyes of Jakes's followers. His appeal crosses racial, cultural, and economic lines. He boldly addresses deep felt needs in the American population or avoided by many churches. His charismatic style has drawn as many as 85,000 people to his conferences dealing with women's and men's issues. Many people see Jakes as a compassionate man who understands their deepest problems, but is that the case? According to his teaching, Jakes is able to get to the core issues of pain people experience from abuse, whether emotional, physical, or sual in nature. He not only addresses these issues but gives people ways to deal with their pain and move on with their lives. Jakes appeals to people externally by addressing their physical and emotional needs. At the same time, many people are asking for help in discerning the right and wrong in his teachings. Several aspects of his teaching are problematic. Jakes seems to be the ultimate American success story of one who has gone from rags to riches. His influence across the Pentecostal, charismatic, and evangelical world is staggering. His television program, The Potter's House, is beamed into more than 500 prisons and viewed by 3 million people in the United States, England, the Caribbean, Uganda, Zimbabwe, and South Africa. He has twice been a featured speaker at Promise Keeper Stadium events and has co-hosted both The 700 Club and Praise the Lord. He appeared on Larry King Live with Pat Robertson, Chuck Colson, and Jerry Falwell on September 2, 1998 to discuss morality and forgiveness issues pertaining to President Clinton. He pastors a church less than three years old that has 17,000 members, with extensive outreach programs to the poor and disadvantaged. His Woman Thou Art Loosed conference between 29 
The 31st of July, 1999 drew 85,000 women to Atlanta's Georgia Dome and had 100 satellite transmissions to prisons and detention centers. Presidential frontrunner George W. Bush, who has endorsed the Potter's House's outreach programs, spoke at the WTAL conference in Atlanta. So, how come he still has time to attend parties with notorious people like Diddy? Coincidentally, while controversial issues have been kept off-limits in most churches, Jakes comes out and addresses sexism as a sin. This is the message women want to hear. The issues that Jakes deals with are battered women and how to find healing make the difference. He has answers that a lot of people don't find in church, and yet he hangs out with Diddy, the same who has been accused of doing all these terrible things to women. In his books, Jakes explicitly addresses issues with which women struggle. Not only does he speak to struggles that may date back to childhood experiences, but he also offers solutions. He speaks in a compassionate way that convinces women he cares. He points out that some women are victims without being they were not the direct victims, just the witnesses of a nightmare. They are sad casualties of a cold war, a war that we are losing. Jakes goes a step further by telling women to rise above their attitudes. Until your attitude is corrected, you can't be corrected. You cannot expect the whole human race to move over because you had a bad childhood. The televangelist attributes his success in dealing with women as coming from his own experiences with pain, such as coping with his father's illness and death. In regard to pain, Jake says, it will either make you bitter or it will make you better. I wanted to be made better, not bitter. And while the self-proclaimed man of God appeals to men as well as women, the yearly manpower conferences teach men how to be men. He mentors men regarding their responsibility toward their families. He teaches that a real man provides for and protects his family. He says there are just as many abused men as women. He tells men to respect women as God's gift to them. Jakes even purchased subscriptions to GQ magazine for the men in his organization to help them learn about manhood. The contents of this magazine would shock Christians, however. Jakes has shared the platform at times with Benny Hinn, Richard Roberts, Rod Parsley, Joyce Meyer, Rodney Howard Brown, and Roberts Liardon, each of whom has been involved in one or two controversies in the past. About a year ago, the preacher landed in trouble after uploading a 57-minute sermon titled Real Men Pour In on Father's Day. However, a clip from the video, where he expresses his controversial take on women's place in society, sparked a heavy online backlash against his orthodox notions about societal traditions. Jakes elaborated in the clip that when men have to be led by women or be supported by them, the divine order is broken. In his sermon, the megachurch pastor encouraged women not to attempt to replace men. The 66-year-old pastor later gave the analogy of Adam and Eve. He said that sin exists as Adam ate out of his wife's hand. He claimed that men are not designed to receive from women. In his sermon, Jakes focused on how real men pour in. He explained, if Adam had not allowed Eve to pour into him, sin would have never come into the world. Sin came into the world because Adam broke the order. We were not designed to receive from women. Your self-esteem is compromised when you have to ask your wife for lunch money. And Adam, all of a sudden, has allowed the curse to come because he stopped pouring. According to the bishop, women are supposed to take just about anything from men and make it better. He later clarified that the lack of adherence to this social order goes against what God wants and apparently destroys families. As per the video, the attendees applauded Jakes as he spoke about how women progressed in the corporate world and began earning for themselves but sacrificed their families in the process. He added, This breaks all the sociological order of the culture we are living in now because we are raising up women to be men, and you are not applauded for your femininity. You are applauded in contemporary society by how tough, rough, nasty, mean, aggressive, hateful, possessive you are, and you're climbing the corporate ladder but we are losing our families. Amongst other backward notions about women's value in the social hierarchy, T.D. Jakes further added how women should not lead men as it breaks the divine order. Later he spoke about how women should not use children to be vindictive towards their husbands. The Potter's House of Dallas pastor explained how a court's order for child support could force men to send money, but not the support the children would need as they grow up. As expected, the views of the Dallas megachurch leader sparked severe controversy online. The comments from Jakes' supporters on his YouTube video, however, seemed to agree with the ideas expressed in the sermon. 
Interestingly, a few women also sided with the pastor in that they should subordinate themselves to men in their family. But with this latest controversy linking him to Diddy parties, the man of God will need more than a miracle to convince his followers otherwise. On Twitter, thousands of fans discussed the issue, with one posting, If you're wondering why T.D. Jakes is trending, here it is. T.D. Jakes has a fallout with Mace, who's now exposing that Jakes has been attending Diddy's wild gay parties, which got nothing to do with God. The two are reportedly part of a secret cult where ungodly things happen there. Another added, It's 10 more days left of 2023 and we are already going out with a bang. The Diddy and Cassie drama continues. Somebody out here slobbing on T.D. Jakes's knob, multiple men referring to him as being a power bottom, allegedly. I feel like I'm watching an episode of Greenleaf. With the last one posting, Cassie did her big one. All y'all was crying and throwing up about hush money this, hush money that. Sis ended up giving over Kim Porter Burner phone, exposed T.D. Jake's wide body A as a power bottom, and others that was playing crackhead games with Diddy. And so, there you have it. How many more famous guys are going down with Diddy? It seems the drama is just getting started and we will be here for all of it. And that's it from us today until next time. Thank you for watching.